In this era of uh, complex and high-risk angioplasties, calcified lesions, undilatable lesions are one of the most important subgroup of, uh, of lesions and patient subsets that we come across. And in order to do a good job and in order to revascularize, revascularize them efficiently, we need to have multiple tools available to ourselves so that we can treat these difficult patients in the best possible manner and get the best results. It's very regularly that we come across heavily calcified lesions which have to be either rotoblated or treated with high pressure balloon dilatations to get the optimal result. And it's well recognized that unless we treat these in the most optimal manner to get the largest lumen, we have a greater chances of stent thrombosis and also restenosis. So it's adverse outcomes. Now in the past, we've had regularly those situations where a lesion even though it looks innocuous, is fibrotic or undilatable, or even after a stent has been implanted after predilatation, the stent doesn't implant any further. These, of course, have been the most difficult subgroup of patients thereafter, because once a stent gets implanted, and though the clear understanding is that never stent a lesion unless it's completely dilated and expanded, it's not uncommon to underdilate a lesion and stent it and then realize that the lesion is not expanding adequately and the stent is under expanded. This not just predisposes to thrombosis in the immediate term and acute myocardial infarctions but rapid restenosis as well. So it is actually a boon to have non-compliant balloons for such situations whether it's a pretreatment of calcified lesions, undilatable lesions, or for post-treatment after stent implantation. But we must also understand that there are lesions which don't, don't respond to non-compliant balloons. And in fact, it's very important to have ultra-high pressure non-compliant balloons. And that's perhaps one of the greatest additions to our armamentorium in dealing with complex lesions. Just in order to make you understand certain philosophy and physiology around it, I've been very comfortable with high pressure dilatations, which some of the people, some of the operators aren't. And right through the days of uh, bioresorbable scaffolds, uh, my usual pressure of post dilatation, even of a thin strut metallic stent, is 18 to 20 atmospheres. And it's regularly that I perform high pressure inflations of 22 to 28 atmospheres. But the ultra high pressure balloons go up to 45 atmospheres. And normally, the sound of 45 atmospheres, even sometimes 22 to 28 atmospheres may worry numerous individuals about the risk of perforation. And the 45 atmospheres is almost causes an automatic fear of perforation. But I also want to understand the very important fact that it is not the atmosphere which actually relates to perfor perforation, it's the size of the balloon. For example, a compliant balloon going up to 18 to 20 atmospheres becomes a 3 millimeter compliant balloon becomes 3.5 and 3.6 millimeters and in an undilatable lesion would dog bone at the edges which would become 3.7 millimeters and that's where the perforation happens. If one goes to a non-compliant balloon even the non-compliant balloon at 22 to 28 atmospheres grows from a 3 to 3.4 millimeters. It may not grow to 3.7, but can grow to 3.35 millimeters. And that's a concern. But consider a 3 millimeter balloon, which at 35 atmospheres only becomes 3.1. Now that balloon hasn't expanded. It will actually exert pressure on the undilatable lesion. It will exert pressure on the undilated stent to expand it but will not perforate the artery because it hasn't grown in size. So perforations are in relation to the growth in size rather than the pressure applied. So that is the reason why one is very comfortable of going ultra high pressures with a balloon which does not grow 
and still break those lesions which are unbreakable or undilatable with the usual armamentorium. And that is the reason why we actually feel very comfortable going to 35 to 40 atmospheres with these balloons, which are the ultra-high pressure non-compliant balloons like the OPN.